something happening here. What it is. The first step of this process involves the grate to the bottom of this tank. The water comes through from the, the streams of the sewage and it's divided out. The large deposits that you can actually grab with your hand are taken out by the first grate. And the smaller grate down there will take out small trash. And then it'll go pump through those turbines over there up to the top. These are the turbines I was talking about. They're only doing one right now, which means that they basically at a third capacity of the plant. As you can see, as the, as the bottle rotates, it carries the water up to the top of the plant where it's oxidized. This is the tank where the water goes after it's pumped up by the turbines. These, these right here turn the water and oxidize it so it can put as much oxygen in it as possible. And that helps break down the bacteria. And you can see the sludge and everything that just comes up from doing all this. pumped up through the tanks below and it's taken here where the sludge is churned up and it sucks right to the bottom because the water is so light and uh, you can see all the stuff that comes to the top, all the foam and there's so much oxygen and space in between all the water that if you jump in you'll sink straight to the bottom. I'm not recommending that. Hey, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. In this building behind this big machine right here all the sludge is pumped out of the water that we just saw downstairs and uh, it's, it's turned into all this fertilizer and you take this truck right here and farmers come up and use it as far as fertilizer for their farm. This is the second to last stage after the sludge is pumped out of the water and used for fertilizer. The water comes here to sit for any deposits that are left. They sink to the bottom so they're pumped out and the water is pumped over there for the final stage. This is the final stage of treatment. It used to involve chlorine, where you bleach the water just to disinfect it. But since it's released back into the streams that are eventually into the lake, it just they just use UV rays now. And what happens is when the water comes through, they shine this light, and it kills 99.9% .9 of germs, and it's just effective as chlorine bleach. What are some problems that you've seen as a result of inadequate wastewater treatment? Oh yes, there's um, a lot of problems can happen. One uh, good example is you may have noticed like um, sometimes if you don't treat the water well enough and you release it to the rivers of ponds, you see the algae grow, it becomes green and it smells good, bad, doesn't look good, it's called eutrophication, it kills all plant life, fish life in there, you know, and that's one example of what might happen, and uh, if people are using that water for something, irrigation or drinking, it's even worse, you know, it goes into the food chain with all those bad stuff in the wastewater that you have not really removed, so say, uh, contaminated, so it uh, triggers a whole chain reaction of all these things, you know, and uh, that's what one of the, uh, you know, the big problems you have. Uh, if you don't really uh, treat this uh, wastewater to an acceptable level before you release it back to the uh, natural environment. Okay. I think it's time we stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Battle lines be